Okay, hello everybody. This is Borden here, and I'm here to help you debug your kernels a little better because, let's be honest, using print statements and uh, recompiling every time you want to check something is a rather dull way to do things. And this way will allow you to step through the kernel as if you're debugging just a regular program. So, first things first, you do need to have a few things installed in Visual Studio Code, which is what we will be using to debug it which is the same setup as the Poncho OS tutorial that I and I assume you are following. So you have to go over to the extensions and install the WSL extension, the remote WSL extension, this one. I already have it installed, so it says uninstall here, but this is what you need to install. And then once you have that installed, you can actually call Visual Studio Code right here from within the Windows Subsystem Linux command line. So I'll close the one that I have now and show you that it works. So do code period for this directory and then up comes Visual Studio Code and you will know that it's in Visual Studio Code, it's in uh, WSL mode because you'll see down here at the bottom left WSL Ubuntu 2004. I believe you. you can actually do it also from here too as well. Remote WSL. Well, I forgot how to do it actually, but it's some command up here that lets you do it. It's easier just to run it from the command prompt. And that's that's all you need to be doing for the moment. And the next thing you need to do is follow some of these instructions. The full instructions are for debugging on the command line, but some of them are still needed for uh, Visual, Studio, Visual Studio Code debugging as well. And I'll put the link to the two gists that I'm going to show into the description of the video so that you can come and see them, but I'm going to go through them now. So first you have to install GDB, which is like a new, like a new debugger, which is works with GCC to actually be able to do, issue debugging commands and control the program, or in this case, the kernel that we're running. So. I could go ahead and do that, but it's already installed for me, so it won't actually do anything. But you just do it like that. GDB is already at the newest version. Yep, just as I thought. And you have to add the dash G flag to your C flags if you want to be able to debug something, because otherwise there, there's certain information inside the program being debugged that is looked at by the debugger. And without this dash G, most if not all of it is not there. So to do that, we're going to go over to the make file here in the kernel. And where we have C flags up here, add a dash G. And also while you're at it, add dash G down here too, because interrupts gets compiled separately and doesn't actually use this variable. But everything else that gets compiled with the C and C++ compiler We'll make use of this and you'll have symbols throughout every object in inside of your program. The next thing to do is add some flags to the QEMU QEMU? QEMU? I don't know. Q emulator. Q emulator call. So this is the one that I have now. And this one is optional for v Visual Studio Code, but you, you probably want to have it around for command line debugging because Otherwise, you'll you'll get too far before, if you're trying to debug a crash, it'll it'll keep executing past where you want it to execute. But this one definitely you, you need the dash small s. This will start the actual server inside of QEMU so that you can uh, run a debugging client and get information out of it and put information into it. So that is over here in Visual Studio Code in the run.bat script. See here, I have QEMU system x8664. Here at the end, dash s. Very nice. And also, while you're at it, this will probably save you a lot of trouble since a lot of people, the first thing they do is come in and complain. Well, when I call this, it doesn't say it says it doesn't work. Well, that's because it's not in your path. So put it in your path by doing this. And also, this is this is helpful for me at least because it removes the quotes from the 
paths down here, which don't seem to work otherwise. So between these two things, it solves 99% of the problems that everybody asks on their first day when they're doing this. So that's all the setup that we need. <clears throat> the rest of this down here is stuff for the command line booting. So the next thing you need to do is have these three JSON files in your .vs code folder in your workspace. So right here is the three that I put them in next to the next to the kernel, the new EFI, and the OVMF bin directory. And the contents are describing things that Visual Studio Code can do. So for tasks, let's look at it in here since it's a little bit better colored. There's two tasks that I made. There's build kernel and there's launch Kimu. Kimu. Build kernel does probably what you would expect. It runs make kernel build image in the kernel folder. That's nice. The rest of this is just sort of boilerplate. This one doesn't really have that much effect. I was trying to get it to show more errors in the output down here, but it doesn't work that well. So this is, this is uh, what it's doing is it's looking at the output as if it were GCC output and saying, well, can I find any errors or stuff like that? And this just says it's a build task and it's the default one, so this is what you'll this is what you'll be running when you do the the build command. So I can't actually look at it from here. You have to be inside of a cpp file first. So if I type build, run run build task is Control Shift B, or just run this build task. But Control Shift B is faster. If I press Control Shift B, you'll see starting build down here, and then it's done. It built successfully. And if you want to run the launch emu command, uh, you have to do run task. And it'll list both of them here, build kernel and launch emu. But I'm not going to do that right now because it's sort of moot. Yes, it's, it's a task in here. It's a process. It launches explore.exe run.bat. Because remember, we're in Linux right now. So if you actually go in here and try to run the run.bat script, Well, yeah, you're not going to get very far because this is not meant for Linux. So what this does is a little trick that launches Explorer and passes it the, the batch script so that we're back in Windows just for this step. And it depends on build kernel. So when you run this one, it'll run this one automatically. And then there's a launch JSON, which lets you, uh, it lets you choose things to do when you press the F5 button. The launch button. So there's only one in here, so it's going to do this by default. It's a CCPP debugging type task called debug kernel that I made, and most of this it comes with the default launch.json, but what it's doing is it's launching user bin gdb with this file. If this file is not what yours is called, see how mine kernel bin kernel.elf is in here. If yours is named differently, you'll have to change this accordingly. And the working directory doesn't really matter. It's a workspace folder, but that's the full path here anyway. So not really important. And then this, this came by default. It, it just passes in another argument. And then these two were added for actually connecting to KMU and getting the kernel symbols before we actually start debugging. And then finally, there's a settings. I find that the, uh, the script always wants to return an error code, even when it succeeds the, the make file that is, or the launch kimu, sorry, the launch kimu run.bat script always wants to return one. And so it interprets that as an error and gives you an error message, but this will silence it. That's all this is here for. So if you would like to run it now, all you have to do is press F5. Well, let's do some few things first to set up so that we actually see something interesting here. So let's see, I can put a breakpoint here by pushing there and getting a little red dot. That means that when you start, it's going to pause here. So let's start it. I pressed F5. You can see some stuff happening here at the bottom. It's launching Kimu. And there you have it. It started. And now you've noticed that the, the previous output is still here, but we're stopped here. And we can examine the various variables like this and see all the stuff that's inside of them. And maybe something's going wrong, we can, you can press F11 or 
this button here, step into. It'll go inside the current, the function on the current line. And there's step over, which just goes line by line without entering the functions. So say I don't want to go inside this one. F10, F10, nope, now I've got an R, hooray. I can see all the stuff inside that too. <clears throat> and keep going, keep going, keep going. And then, well, let's see what load GDT does. Oh, we can't go inside that one. Uh, inside prepare memory though we can. So say I'm in here and I'm getting the wrong uh, value for something. Let's say it's inside of re EFI memory map and I'm getting the wrong value for memory size. Actually, I can do a trick, just right click, run to cursor, and now I'm on this line. You can see that the memory size is this much. And if that were not what I expected, then I would be worried about that. But it's what I expect, so everything is fine. And then if you want to continue, you can just press F5 again. And it's still running. And the one thing you'll notice is, even if you press stop here, it won't actually stop QEMU unless you're paused on a breakpoint. So just be, be careful about that. You have to actually quit this before you try to debug again, or else it'll hang and give you a message after a little while. And so that's the end of the video, and I hope this was useful. Uh, if I find a topic that I would like to discuss again, I might make another video, but for now, I'll see you all later.